What a wonderful morning to be gathered together as we continue with the season of Easter and continue to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, our Good Shepherd. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Peace from above and for salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast. A victory for our God. Alleluia. Please join me in the prayer of the day as printed on your bulletin insert. Lord Jesus, Good Shepherd, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. 
for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for the fourth Sunday of Easter is the familiar words of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here ends the first reading. rise for the reading of the gospel.
The Gospel for this day comes from the 10th chapter of John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of God, the word of life. Please be seated. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to see if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the whip of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark, and deep. But I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. Poetry is this wonderful way of communication that we have as human beings. It is something that seems to transcend and go across time and culture. In every society, just about, there is poetry. There is a way of speaking about the world that is wrapped up in artwork and indirectness and metaphor and rhyme and meter. Now, I'm not an expert on poetry in any way. I can't tell you all the different forms of it, and it took me a long time to memorize that one poem. But I know poetry when I like it. I know a good poem when it moves me somewhere deep inside. And maybe that was Robert Frost stopping by the woods on a snowy evening. Maybe that's the type of poetry you like. Or maybe you like Carl Sandburg when he talks about Chicago as a city of big soldiers or shoulders. Or maybe you like Dylan Thomas as he says, do not go quietly into that good night rage, rage against the dying of the light. Or maybe you like one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Whatever your case may be, there is something in there that speaks to us, that moves us, and that is lasting. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday, where we always read Psalm 23 and then one of the things from John about Jesus being the Good Shepherd. And it really struck me as I was looking at the 23rd Psalm, how enduring, how beloved that poem really is, because that's what the Psalms are. They were probably ancient hymns, but they are at the very least ancient poems. In fact, if I wanted to, every single song we sang today could have been based on Psalm 23. We have enough in our little hymnal to fill up, you know, the hymn of the day, the opening, the closing, uh, several communion hymns. We love that psalm. It's read at a lot of funerals because it brings comfort to so many people. And if you are not aware, this ginormous stained glass window is based off the 23rd Psalm. You can read more about it. There's a little sheet in the back. And what struck me is this poem is probably eh, 3,000 years old. 
We're not quite sure when it was written, but we can guesstimate around 3,000 years old. And it is still with us and still being read and, and still moving people, even when it's translated into a language that did not exist, that is the English language, when it was originally written all those centuries ago. That's the power of poetry, of rhyme and meter. It opens up the world for us. It can open up a text and an idea in a way that direct speech or direct prose can't. And it offers some depth and some meat to the idea that you are trying to get after that allows people to hear it in, in slightly different ways here and there. So for example, with the big window, is that how I would have interpreted Psalm 23? I'll be honest, no, I, I really struggle when I look at that, but it is pretty. Right, but that is how that artist interpreted it. There are certain hymns in the book, as I said, and the one we're gonna read in a little bit, the, the king of, of love, my shepherd is, that's my personal favorite. I love that hymn. That speaks to me. Here's the thing. We don't always like that uncertainty, though. We don't always like that, that openness and that, that mushy, amoebic space of, well, what, what, because as one theologian uh, once said, we in the West, that is American, European Christianity, the Catholics and the Protestants, we are all lawyers. No offense, Aaron. But right, we want to know, what does this mean? What do we have to do? When we look at the text, we dig into it endlessly and we pick it apart. Uh, James Eaton, was, who was a poet laureate, and was a professor as well, said one of the worst things he ever saw was when his students would take a poem and they would tie it to a chair and they would say, tell us all your secrets. We want to know exactly. And we ask questions like, well, does a good shepherd lay down their life for the sheep? Because let's be honest, once they've done that, the rest of the sheep are in trouble. And sometimes that's okay to do. I'll be honest, sometimes that's the beauty of Scripture. You can dig deep into it, and you can find a little gem here and there, but sometimes it's just good to hear the poetry of the text. To put our ear up to it, again, to quote James Eaton, to hear what sounds come, and to see what new thing it might inspire us today. What does it mean for God to be a good shepherd? And why does that image continue to stick with us after all these eons? Is it because we have a deep knowledge of sheep and shepherding? No. All right, let's be honest. Most of us have not seen a sheep outside of the county fair or a petting zoo, right? That's our only experience. But when we hear those words... When we hear your rod and your staff, you comfort me, they lead me beside still waters, green fields, all the rest of it, we feel it. And that's the other beautiful thing of poetry, is that it can take a world that we maybe have no experience with, we have no real understanding of it, and it can open it up in a different way. That's why I like Robert Frost so much. He, he brings alive New England, even though I, I was only there as an infant, only time I've been up in Maine. But when I hear him talk about good fences make good neighbors, there is something that makes it come alive for me. I think this is why God chooses poetry so often. I think this is why there are 150 psalms. Because we keep hearing this good news from a being, from a God that we never fully understand in this life that we never fully grasp the side of heaven. And it keeps inspiring us to bring that good news alive in new and different ways. That's the good news. That God continues to speak to us in a way that doesn't easily die. That doesn't easily fall away. Right? Because I preach these sermons, Pastor Chris preaches these sermons, you hear them, you compliment us, thank you very much, but those will die away. <laughs> no one's going to be reading them 3,000 years from now. But scripture and poetry, oh, that sticks with us. 
I think that's why God chooses it. Because even as it crosses eons and language barriers, interpretations and lifestyles that are so vastly different from uh, the 10th century BC all the way to the 21st century AD, we continue to hear good news. So as you continue to dig into God's word, as you continue to hear this good news that God is our good shepherd who loves us and will care for us and will lay down his very life for us, allow that poetry to speak to you. You don't have to be an expert. You don't need any degrees. Hear that gospel message. Hear that rhyme and meter. And know that in between the words, in between the very letters, God is speaking the good news. The good news that we are beloved, that we are cared for, and that we have a Savior who will do anything, including die, in order to show us that. Because behind that metaphor, behind that image, is always the living word and our Savior, who is Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. <clears throat>
as people brought together by the beauty of the resurrection and God's love through Jesus Christ. Let us join together with the saints of all times and all places, confessing our common faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we gather together, we lift up to God those things that weigh on our hearts and our minds. And so it is today in prayer that we lift up all those who are on our prayer list, which is printed in the bulletin insert, and we also lift up in prayer those who are experiencing the ongoing struggles in Gaza and Ukraine, as well as all those who serve our country and our community. Also today in our prayers, we lift up and give thanks for the 14 young people who are coming forward this afternoon to affirm the faith into which they were baptized as they celebrate their confirmation. We are very blessed here at Good Shepherd to have such a marvelous group of young people worthy not only to pray for, but to celebrate and to rejoice over. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Shepherding God, gather your church whenever we wander from you and one another. Empower our church to worship and serve alongside global companions like those in Coronationville as equal co-workers in the gospel. God of grace, grace, nurturing God, preserve the health of your creation. Inspire scientists, researchers, and all people entrusted with the task of caring for the earth that we may be better stewards of the world. God of grace, Almighty God, lead nations and communities to share resources, cooperate in solving conflicts, and listen to the wisdom of indigenous peoples. Help all those who serve our country and communities to use their power for good. God of grace, loving God, protect those living without housing, victims of domestic abuse, those ill and those grieving, and all who live with chronic illness, especially Paul, Jan, Terry, Annie, Ed, Kim, Carol, Kathleen, Nicole, Scott, Marilyn, Jurgen, Grant, Bill, Nancy, Barry, Sue, Georgia, Bill, David, Ryan, Michael, Dave, Jane, Howard, Tom, Archie, Cameron, Greg, Stella, Diane, Mike, Katie, June, James, Stephen, Gavin, Michelle, Kevin, Mary, Howard, Dan, and all those experiencing the violence in Gaza and the Ukraine. Guide communities to actively care for people who are vulnerable. God of grace. Gracious God, help Good Shepherd and all communities of faith to listen for your voice. Inspire us and those affirming their faith today to follow you. Invite us to more deeply love and serve our neighbors, especially those on the margins. God of grace. 
Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us now take a moment and exchange a sign of the Lord's peace with those around you. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts ready to praise you and to respond to those in need through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, 
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we share of this meal, we remember Christ who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table for all are welcome.
Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and forever keep you in God's grace. Amen. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. Go in peace, live and share the good news. Thanks, Thanks Jesus. Jesus.